Dumaguete. Hello, Negros Oriental. Hello, Sulaimanians around the world. This is Joshua Soldivillo. And this is Ronilyn Faith Bailosis. And you're watching Hashtag Siliman. For Siliman updates, we would like to congratulate the new licensed social workers, psychologists, and psychometricians, mechanical engineers who passed the February 2022 board examinations. Congratulations on a job well done. Congrats! And of course, the Silliman University student government is calling all Silimanians to represent their organizations and join and participate in Balitaktakan, the first inter-organizational debate competition which will happen on March 18 to 20, 2022. The registration is ongoing and you may visit the SUSG official Facebook page for more information. See you there! Meanwhile, the University Christian Life Emphasis Month has officially started. We urge the Silliman community to participate in the events and activities that are lined up for this month and celebration of UCLEM. We are also inviting everyone to watch the webinar about Your Vote, Your Voice with Commissioner Rowena Gonzon and Dr. Noriel Capulong as speakers. That's going to be on March 23rd, 2022 at 10 a.m. See you there. That's all for today. See you next week for another Hashtag Silman Updates. Good evening, everyone. This is a magazine program that talks about the different aspects of Silliman University. A program initiated to discuss matters concerning the campus by the sea. Welcome to Hashtag Silliman. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining our episode tonight. We hope that you are in the excellent state of your health. Yeah. And today's episode will actually center on our celebration this month of March, which is Women Empowerment celebration of our women honoring paying homage to our women in our society so i just like want to greet everybody a happy women's month i hope uh, you are well celebrated and continue the fight because you are very important in our society and definitely we owe you a lot of things right especially to my mother happy women's month yeah so to begin our episode tonight, allow me to introduce our guests who are also warriors, who are also um, advocates no, of women empowerment. Allow me to begin with the coordinator of Center for Gender Studies and Development, Assistant <coughs> Professor Phoebe Tan. Ma'am, good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening, Joshua. And we also have with us the Director for Research and Development Center of Silman University, Please help me welcome Professor Enrique or Ike Orason. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the invitation to be here. All right. So I think it's been a while that we have seen each other face to face, Mam Phoebe yeah. and Sir Ike. So I'd like to ask you first, how are you? What keeps you busy these days? And how is, how is it so far no, with the pandemic? I'm good. And uh, we continue to. Uh, conduct the uh, activities that we have lined up specially for the Women's Month. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. How about you, Sir Ike? Well, the pandemic uh, never stopped me from wow. writing <laughs> because I can do it in isolation. Mm. Yeah. That's uh, good. Yeah. To give our audience an idea, how do you describe or what do you think, uh, what is the function of g the Gender Studies um, Center and, of course, the Research and Development Center? Let us have first. Okay, uh, the function of the center is, uh, it functions as a catalyst for gender mainstreaming and lead advocate of uh, women empowerment and uh, gender equality. Yeah. For the Research and Development Center, primarily it's uh, uh, the, the venue here in the university that promotes the culture of research and publication but we also extend to the community, uh, assist uh, organizations and local government units uh, on projects that requires our expertise in gathering data, analysis, and uh, dissemination of results. Right. So I believe your offices are very busy all year round, no? I mean, from Jan literally from January until December. So um, in line with the Women's Month celebration, Assistant Professor Tan, what have been the activities that you've been doing in, in uh, the Center for Gender Studies and mm. Development? 
Okay, uh, the conduct of uh, gender sensitivity trainings, this time for the local government units, and also a uh, being a part of media forums mm -hmm. as a resource person, as a resource person, and uh, also uh, for this uh, month, Josh, we are going to start the, a series of uh, orientations on the Bawal Bastos Law, Ooh. or uh, RA 11313, otherwise known as the Safe Spaces <coughs> Act of 2019. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, is this a relatively, this is a new law? This is a relatively a new one, All yes, right. a new law. So at this point, are we still in the IRR, the implementation? Uh, done already. Done already. Yes. So we are now uh, giving orientations. Orientations. Yes. Right. That's wonderful. So um, how about the office of uh, uh, Dr. Urasha? What have been the, um, let's say, activities or programs that you do in connection with uh, women's studies, perhaps, or gender studies? Well, uh, Aside from the usual function of the <coughs> research center, uh, which is more directed towards our faculty, encouraging them to do research and publish works, I'm involved uh, with the Fish Right program, and there's a component there uh, which I headed uh, together with some of our faculty, mm -hmm. and we call that uh, initiative as uh, empowering women to empower other women and I could discuss it later on. Mm -hmm. But that's a developing, you know, developing story because <clears throat> you cannot yet say it's successful at this time because yeah. that's the first year when since we have the pandemic. Uh, but there are many things that have uh, surfaced uh, where I think uh, these are potential areas that eventually I could connect with the Gender Studies and Development uh, Center. Right now, because we don't have yet face-to-face, -face, mm -hmm. we don't have yet students who could be involved in the project. Uh, at least uh, our team was able to, to organize these women. And that could be a good area for service learning and for uh, research of our faculty. Wow. You know, Josh, we are celebrating Women's Month. Yeah. And I'd like to ask um, Mam Ma Tan about this one. What are the common issues that women still face nowadays that we need to address? Okay. Uh, from attendance in different forums and uh, also linkages with uh, different institutions and governing bodies as well as NGOs, I was able to gather that uh, there are still issues that uh, our women are facing today. Right. And one is gender stereotyping, another one is economic uh, marginalization, mm -hmm. then we have political uh, subordination mm -hmm. wow. and um, multiple burden and violence against women. Mm -hmm. These are the major issues that they are facing still today. You mentioned about the gender stereotypes that, it, that yes. are being imposed by women. What do you think yes. are the most common stereotypes that women have to you know, put up with it or what? They, overcome. Yeah, to overcome. Yes, um, the women have to overcome. I think society has to be educated on uh, like valuing women's work for example yeah. that is a stereotype like uh, the the work of the woman is still undervalued mm -hmm. and um, uh, so that's uh, one stereotype especially the work at home it is not seen or regarded yes. as work yeah. because uh, it is not paid mm -mm. so that's an example of a stereotype so yeah. they are still facing that particular issue to this day so, uh, Ma'am Phoebe, I'd just, like I just like to extend that discussion. So, how do we now empower uh, these women? And how do we break this stereotype? Okay. Uh, given that, uh, of course, especially our mothers that are just staying at home, about the, the, the prescribed roles of women in a society. Okay, thank you. We educate them to be knowledgeable on their rights and to be assertive <coughs> of their rights. At the same time that we also educate the men to respect women. Yeah. And then we give them orientation on the laws that address these issues. 
So if we have to go to school, then the integration of uh, gender concepts, concerns, and issues in the curriculum. Mm. And uh, also mainstreaming or integrating gender in the programs in the university, for example. Mm. So how do we integrate or what programs do we have for women here in the university, sir? Or ma'am, time. Like uh, when we integrate, uh, like we review the, the curricula or the curriculum, that is why we were able to conduct in the past uh, gender sensitivity trainings yes. for faculty members from the early childhood department to the collegiate level. Mm -mm. And uh, with the hope that they will be equipped on uh, how to mainstream gender in right. their teaching. Okay. We must start them young. So yes, we must... yes. And also uh, gender in research. And uh, we uh, hope to encourage uh, yes. more faculty members to write okay, about uh, women's issues or women's concerns. I, I got, I'd like to go to Dr. Oracion, sir, as the chief of our research development center. Um, how do we, and I, I know you also have a lot of projects, say, on uh, material development, um, even into community initiatives. How do you ensure that these materials are gender sensitive? Uh, do you have the specific guidelines, let's say, in module writing, for instance? Or uh, do you make sure that the involvement is, there should be a, a woman? So what have been the efforts or what have been the practices so far? Well, primarily we have the research agenda, and one of those points raise our issues on gender. Mm -hmm. uh, that depends on the topic, of course, mm -hmm. uh, when uh, gender issue should be uh, part of it, no? yeah. uh, or the framework should be like that. No? Uh, in other words, that depends on the researcher, but they're informed already that uh, we have this research agenda. Uh, we have to use uh, gender fair language. As much as possible, we have to disaggregate data according to male, female, and so right. on. Uh, it, but it's not a criteria uh, for approving or disapproving mm. the proposal. Because still, the researcher knows best, no? Yeah. But the guidance is there. Right. Yeah. Mm. Talking about how the center uh, may be able to encourage more faculty or the faculty to engage, uh, to engage this, in yeah. this. That's, uh, we initiate, no, that's why I said earlier, we have this uh, project, this is initiative of organizing clusters of women uh, together with the College of Business Administration, particularly through Ms. Myla Bumidjano, and with the Nutrition and Dietetics Department uh, and uh, we, uh, we organize them to be able to uh, uh, engage in fish trading mm. and therefore yes. that's one way of empowering them economically mm -mm. so they will no longer be dependent upon their husbands. Their husbands. Right. Uh, they were provided uh, skills training in value adding uh, through the nutrition and dietetics department and then the, uh, the uh, Financial literacy, the, Very business, the business planning yeah. that's provided by our faculty also. And in our case, in the social, which I represented in the team, uh, is the organizing. All right. uh, the overall idea would be that we will be having this kind of women who are economically uh, empowered because they could earn now, not so dependent upon their husbands. Right. But take note, one of the trick here is because they would be provided with startup capital, oh. they would buy the fish of their husbands. Ah, ah okay. okay. Because one of the major reasons why they sell their fish at a lower price because of the need for cash. Right, yes. so correct. If they have the cash now, they buy the fish mm -hmm. of their husbands or their neighbors uh, in a price that, of, of course, uh, uh, normal in the in the community, yes. it's mm. not overpriced. It's not also yeah. underpriced, very low, yeah. underpriced. No, then after that, uh, they were also being uh, encouraged or required to promote uh, right fishing. Mm. 
mm. meaning they are not going to buy fish that are illegally caught, unregulated, and unreported. So they have role in conservation. Mm. Overall, because they could make decisions already, mm -hmm. both economically and also in the community. Environmentally. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That becomes an empowerment to these women. Mm. Wow. So and this, yeah. the research part of it would come in. Mm. And that's one area I'm trying to promote uh, among those who are involved. So mm. ND is planning to do uh, research along that line. Also, uh, uh, Myla mm -hmm. would be doing uh, uh, an assessment of that. Yeah. So here, we have an example of we're doing uh, service to the community. We're providing opportunity also for for faculty yes. to be mm -hmm. engaged in research. And even promote environmental and promote, conservation. Yeah. Heating more than two birds with yeah. one stone. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very holistic, I should say. There's a lot of programs and projects in store for us, not just for the Siliman community, but also um, civic society as well. My question is that because of the pandemic, I know that there are lo a lot of limitations. Um, I'd like to ask, what were the challenges that both of the offices encountered? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I, I could answer that. Okay. I mean, because uh, there are risks involved, really, in right. going, yeah. going out to the community and uh, Unfortunately, we experience many don't want to experience, no? so <laughs> we get uh, COVID. Yeah. <laughs> but good, we we're vaccinated, so at least no, on my part, uh, we made it. Uh, that's a big challenge, really, on how to to deal with people in the community because right. you have to do it face, face to face. To face. Yeah. So we have to organize small clusters yes. and to be always. Uh, in a protected, uh, protected following the protocols, stance, uh, following the protocols. Uh, so the usual before that we would come in a large group. Group now is clusters. Clusters, and uh, the the use of mobile phone, of course, very uh, helpful. Technology very now comes technology in. Technology comes in because so, uh, they were provided also. These women that we are assisting were provided by the Dr. Mariano Lau uh, Laboratory. Wow. Mm. with the gadgets. So there's this also component of digital literacy, no? Technological yeah. integration. Yeah, we, ha we had it before the pandemic. Before? They were trained. They were trained, some of these uh, right. groups that we organize. So, um, Ron, hearing the listening no, to their narratives, their sharing of experiences of the activities that they do on the ground, I mean, it just really makes us so proud as a Silimanian, as a, and even as a faculty member of this university, that we are, we are doing this, no? and this, uh, these programs are very, very impactful to the empowerment of our women. But uh, talking about uh, empowerment and, of course, the external activities that we do, how about in the internal um, assistant professor, Tan? Um, how, how can our students avail the services of your office? Yeah, uh, so avail the services uh, as of this time, though I'm very happy and so thankful that the office has been renovated. Wow. And then um, it, uh, well, they can visit us when we go back to the old norm. And uh, maybe uh, like uh, what other universities outside Dumaguete are doing, mag usap tayo. Uh, but as of now, uh, like I said, we are already on the way of starting the uh, orientation about the Bawal Bastos Law because this particular law, RA 11313, has been a, uh, the, uh, su the suggested law okay, by uh, the, some bodies like the PCW or mm -hmm. the Philippine Commission on Women mm -hmm. to be promoted uh, beginning with our celebration of the 18-day campaign against violence against women last November. So there will be a series. So we will start Josh and Ron uh, this month, mm -hmm. okay, as a part of our celebration of Women's Month. And then yung uh, mag-usap tayo, they can visit, although this is not formal yet, but they can always come to us because we can provide them with yes. referrals. Wow. Yes, uh, referrals and also we can give them uh, on-the-spot orientation mm -hmm. about laws. 
So I think that's very empowering also and a very good opportunity no? for our students in the campus to really enjoy these services mm. and be able to refer to the proper institution, organization, or even um, professional. So I'd like to ask now, Dr. Oracion, that of course, this is Women's Month celebration and mm. um, it seems that you're so active in women uh, empowerment. Wh why are you doing this, sir? And how does it feel being a man uh, empowering women? I suppose Hold on to he that is answer. a feminist. A feminist, but yeah. before that, we'll be taking a, a short <laughs> break, so we'll be right back. Welcome back to Hashtag Siliman. We are still with our guest, Assistant Professor Tan and Dr. Orashan here on Women's Month and Women Empowerment. So before we pause for a break, I asked a question to Dr. Orashan about his involvement no, in women yeah. empowerment. Sir, uh, why are you doing this and what do you think is the role of men in empowering women? Well, first of all, I love women. <laughs> <laughs> That's being a man. Uh, the point is, I had been exposed to these things. Uh, I had enrolled in uh, feminist uh, courses, uh, courses yeah. uh, together with uh, Phoebe. Uh, and 
through those years that I had been doing research, I have realized that women have the potential. Uh, the only problem is they have this ceiling where they cannot go beyond. That's the glass ceiling. And in order to awaken this potential, they have to be assisted. Now, in a patriarchal society, men are perceived to be that strong. Yeah. Mm. And I think men should be the instrument also for breaking that ceiling. Yes, that ceiling. And what we are doing now, what I'm doing now, together with other women at Siliman, yes. our, our faculty, is an illustration for that. And it is easy for me to do that because I have the theoretical background. Mm. Now, aside from the fact that I'm teaching social theory <laughs> and we discuss about all these things, right. uh, I have this practical knowledge also. And I know, I know that uh, if women could be given that opportunity, they can contribute more. Now, as a family man, I, I could also attest that. Uh, well, my friends could also say that, how my wife is so empowered, I think. Wow. So this yeah. is, I think this is not all about the war of the sexes, but you know, um, this is something to do about respect and the acknowledgement that uh, we are not limited to the gender that we are assigned or the gender that we prefer right. or the sex that we are assigned at birth, no? So the, the theme for this um, month celebration given by PC, PCW is agenda ng kababaihan tungo sa kaunlaran. What is your take on that, Ma'am Phoebe? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, that is a, the sub-theme. Okay, the theme is uh, we make change work for women and uh, it has been a recurring theme. Mm -hmm. We started with that uh, in our celebration uh, of Women's Month last uh, 2017. So this is the sixth year of using the same theme and this is the last uh, year. Okay, so the sub-theme because uh, it is election season, then we have uh, agenda ng mga kababaihan tungo sa kaunlaran. So, we are we should be ready so we are taking the lead not only as uh, being with the center for gender studies but also uh, being a member of the provincial commission on women and the local council of women we are now taking the lead of uh, uh, asking the women asking them to prepare uh, the what agenda they would like uh, to be included in mm -hmm. the platform of uh, the candidates. So that is why it's agenda ng kababain tungo, okay, so for, yes, for progress or and development. Mm -hmm. And uh, included in that uh, agenda, if I may continue, is education for women. Yes, very mm -hmm. important. Yeah, very important. Education and uh, then the use of technology, for example. Uh, technology uh, literacy, for example and then also women and politics. We have to equip them and educate them to uh, hopefully uh, involve themselves and participate in decision making Correct. and be our leaders also in the future. Mm -hmm. right. And then use of uh, energy and then environment and then economic empowerment and all. Mm -mm. So, Ma'am Phoebe, listening to the narrative yeah. of Dr. Orashon earlier as part also of the team no, that empowers other women, how does it feel that uh, other men are also part of your battle, of this fight? Because, you know, this is not, Women's Month is not just really for women, but this is for everybody no, to acknowledge that uh, we also have these equal opportunities. Yeah, uh, I am very happy that we have men like uh, Ike, uh, yeah, we were, we have been together in our gender studies courses, <laughs> and uh, so I saw him, and uh, he was, uh, he loved women. In the sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's controversial. <laughs> but we know, but we know what you mean, ma'am. Yeah. I mean, he, he celebrates women. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> And um, we, we are able to, to work together well, uh, yeah. 
Uh, since the very beginning of our involvement in, mm -hmm. uh, in our study, and uh, I was able to participate uh, in uh, uh, research uh, with him, only that I was so much uh, engaged or involved uh, in uh, uh, the activities like information drive, campaign right. orientation. So, right. And I, I think one of the projects that we were together I got that funding from Represent, no? Exactly. It's about the pre, the, the one you mentioned, the pre marriage uh, seminar. Yeah. Mm. So we did an assessment of it. If indeed uh, it is uh, gender fair, no? It's promoting uh, equality, no? Uh, well, that's why I said it's an old study. At that time, it was not. So it has to be deconstructed, no? Uh, the language use, uh, the, right. the illustrations yes. use, uh, and in fact, uh, the interpretation of the biblical text, Correct. and so on. No? Mm -hmm. uh, so, it was, it was a very, very uh, yeah. interesting work. Uh, it, was, uh, it was our initiation, really, no? yes. for, the first, for the first research on, uh, on gender issues, gender uh, particularly issues. women. Reproductive and, health. Yeah, reproductive yes. health. So, because reproductive health is a broad concept. So it's not only talking about right. health, it's talking about the well-being well -being. Uh, in general yeah. of uh, women. So there's a question. Actually, Joshua asked this question last night. Why yes. is there <laughs> why is there a celebration for Women's Month, but there's no celebration for Men's Month? I see. For, for a month, we celebrate men. Why do you think? Because every day is a man's day. Yeah, because we live in a patriarchal society, <laughs> Josh. <laughs> every day is a man's day. And uh, actually, when we celebrate uh, yesterday, March 8th, it's celebrated worldwide as International Women's Day. Mm -mm. And then the whole month of uh, March by uh, presidential decree uh, is celebrated as National Women's Month. This is to highlight the contributions and achievements of women and um, uh, to recognize their contribution to national development at the same time that uh, we also assess as to what we have done so far okay, for, for the women so that we will be able to uh, eventually achieve our twin goals of women empowerment and gender equality. Mm -hmm. But but take note that uh, we are not only focusing really uh, on women yeah. because th there are also other groups of men. Yes, mm -hmm. we're focusing on masculinity as yeah. an issue, and it was part of it in gender. Yeah. watch no G wave. G wave. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I was one of those who, was, you know, in that group where we also hold uh, seminars among. Among men, um, and, mm -hmm. and it's still continuing. Yes, they are very it's active until now. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, at the time, I call that one sustainable masculinity, mm -hmm. meaning interesting. Men could only be would sustain themselves if they are going to be kind, if they are going to be uh, respectful, respectful to women, and, and so on. No, they don't have to be violent, to be aggressive, mm -hmm. and so on, because that's going to cause them their failure, yeah. like. You know, I've been talking about vices, why men. So it's not sustainable. Correct. Mm -hmm. And what's the reason why you, you are into those vices? Because I want to show that I'm a man. Yeah. Why do you have to kill a person? Why do you have to fight? Why do you have to talk about it? Because I'm a man. So there, it's, not, it's not sustainable. Correct. Mm -hmm. But if they know how to deal the problem in a diplomatic way, to have a conversation, uh, discuss it, then I think our species, the men, would be sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and yeah. I think from all of this, uh, we, we already see the importance of the correct education, the yeah. right education. And on that connection, I'd like to ask both of you, since I consider you both as institutions, as pillars here in Siliman University, how does Siliman education contribute to, let's say, to a learner, to a student of becoming gender sensitive? Mm -mm. and being empowered diba? because we say an empowered person is also someone that empowers others so when it comes to the Silliman education brand w what do you think is the uh, or the highlights of our uh, Silliman education 
Ma'am Phoebe first. Okay, I can see uh, Suleiman University as already a uh, uh, empowered okay, uh, institution. So uh, through its uh, different programs, it has helped uh, faculty members, including staff, and also its students to be empowered as well. Correct. So now that uh, it is, uh, we understand that uh, because of that empowerment, then uh, the curricula and uh, uh, is uh, also a, uh, a gender sensitive one. And uh, with that, now the, whatever a, a uh, student learns will also be shared with others. So that is how I see it, that there is that ripple effect or, uh, you know, from being empowered and then you also empower others to be empowered. Yeah, so in other words, Silliman University itself offers I, that right environment. Yes, I can see that. Yeah. And I think that's a good news no, to everybody who are interested to really to have a safe space to learn. And mm -hmm. I think Silliman University does offer that. Yeah. Sir, I. Well, uh, we, we have policies and programs that uh, are geared towards the promotion of uh, gender equality, no? particularly uh, among women. And remember, we, we are promoting this whole person education. education. Correct. And given the framework of gender equality, uh, that really helped right, in the promotion of this kind of disposition. Much more if we are you know, exposing our students together with the faculty uh, outside of the community, and they learn of course, they learn the bad and the good, no? mm -hmm. and then bring that back to the classroom to process it uh, and to look into what then is the relevance or value of being uh, gender fair no? or of respecting women, what benefits that could bring. Meaning, our program exposes students uh, to all realities in life mm. within the framework that is gender uh, sensitive and equitable. Wow. Oh. Josh, um, Women's Month is also celebrating the strength of a woman. I'd like to ask um, the two cents of our guest for tonight. How do you describe the strength of a woman? Okay, the strength of the woman is, uh, um, well, for me, it is still uh, developing, although. Uh, I, I, I should say that they are, uh, the woman is now gaining strength. I can see that. And uh, we are now on the bridge of no return. So yes. I, I could see that uh, many women have, uh, are learning a lot, though mm -hmm. they, we, they still have to learn more. And uh, there are now women who really assert their rights. Mm -hmm. So I could see that uh, when you say, oh, if I have to describe the strength, so it's it's uh, already there in place but uh, we need to that is why it is uh, appropriate to remove the barriers so like yeah. the, ceiling, the ceiling so that uh, the men will also help uh, the women uh, uh, gain the, okay that strength so that we will attain in other words they are still here <laughs> here and then we are helping them to move up okay so then this time when they are uh, what is this, uh, on a level that they're together, then we can say that gender equality and women empowerment have been achieved. Mm -hmm. And I think one day, one day, yes. uh, that will happen. Sure, yes. I. Yeah, that's a very difficult question for me <laughs> to answer, no? being, being a man. How about you, Josh? But you know, what, what I see as the strength of a woman is that they're strong. Being strong is a, is a strength of a woman. Strong emotionally, they cry. <laughs> yes. We may, men don't cry. You know? I mean, that's a very patriarchal notion. And sure, therefore, we get sick mm. more. <laughs> Physically, women may not be that strong, but they have that natural capacity to give life, to give birth. That's physical strength. Financially, we'll just provide them. <laughs> and they could make a good fortune out of it. The budgeting. 
because they were not given the opportunity that's why they don't I mean they were not allowed to work because you still have to stay at home correct how about if you allow your wife to work my wife is a full-time worker we're the opposite she's a civil engineer I'm a teacher and often times they thought that you know, I, I'm, I'm the engineer because <laughs> I'm a man. I mean, that, that's a common, common yeah, stereotype. Stereotype. Eh? Oh. Uh, she has her own bank. I have my own bank. Yeah. She has no problem of budgeting. I don't have also the problem of budgeting because <laughs> I budget my own. But we contribute fairly. Yes. Share mm -hmm. resources. Yes. In other words, the strength of the woman is that ability to be strong in all adversities in yes. life. Wow. So I think um, it has been a productive, stimulating discussion, yeah. I should say, Ron. But we really are running out of time, and we're going to wrap it up with a fast talk. All right? Are you ready, Sir I and Mom Phoebe for a fast talk? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ready? All right. So we'll be giving you two <laughs> options, and without uh, second thinking, you don't have to think twice. Oh, Just yeah. say whatever mm. you think is your choice. <laughs> All right. Okay. Can we so, pass it also, like? Uh, pass. Okay. Pass. <laughs> so we'll begin with Mam Phoebe. All right. Acacia or ilang ilang? Acacia. Sir Ike. Ilang ilang. <laughs> Gumamela or roses? Ah, uh, roses. Mam Phoebe. Heels or sneakers? Heels. <laughs> Sir Ike, pencil or ball pen? A uh, ball pen. Uh, I, I, I'd like to ask this question to Sir Ike. Sir Ike, Catriona Gray or Pia Wurzbach? Uh, uh, Catriona. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought he will answer his, uh, no, his wife's name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's what I think. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but it, it's not that, uh, the, the choice. Yeah. Yeah, um, okay. Mom Phoebe, pro-choice or pro-life? Pro-life. Okay. Sir Ike, but, sunset or sunrise? Uh, sunrise. Mam Phoebe, books or journals? Books. Sir Ike, past or future? Mm, future. Mam Phoebe, gold or silver? Gold. Sir Ike, equality or equity? Equity. Mam Phoebe, traditional or modern? Modern. Sir Ike, coffee or milk? Uh, coffee. <laughs> Mam Phoebe, rainy days or sunny days? Sunny days. Sunny Sir days. Ike, close or open? Uh, open. <laughs> Mam Phoebe, bake show pao or cheese bread? Don't bake you, <laughs> <laughs> Sir Ike, most memorable experience in Siliman? That will require a lot of words. Yeah. Event or place? Or? Anything, sir. What Anything. comes to mind first? Oh, amphitheater. amphitheater. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> the usual. <laughs> Mom, Phoebe, Filipino woman that you admire the most? Oh, what comes to my mind? Cory Aquino. Cory Aquino. <laughs> Sir Ike, a man you find inspiring? Gandhi. Gandhi. Mom Phoebe, the most beautiful name of a woman? Phoebe. Oh. <laughs> I love myself. Correct answer. The, Sir Ike, the most beautiful place in the university? Oh, the library. The library. Uh, because of course we're, we're the here. <laughs> now, this made me the library. I was a working student here. Same no. here. All I, right. I, I know something. Oh, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> Spill the tea. Shout out to our uh, Silliman <laughs> University library men and women. <laughs> Thank you for allowing us to use this place. Yeah. So this has been a very wonderful and fun in, and interactive conversation. And we have come to the last segment of this episode called Hashtag WTP Words to Ponder. Ron, what is your word or what are the words so, that really um, surfaced in this conversation? Ladies first talaga, no? Because women is what? But of course, I'd like to uh, bank on this word. I'd like to ponder on this word, word and that is femininity. It, because, it is because oftentimes a society um, perceive femininity as a weakness when in fact it is not. It is actually the strength of a woman. And I'd like to answer my question a while ago that what is a strength or how do we describe a strength of a woman? It is our ability to actually grow from the dark or grow from the grassroots. Um, it is because we have the ability to challenge the status quo, to challenge the hegemony, and we also have the capability or the capacity to lead. And I think that stems on our femininity. 
Um, and I, I also like to incorporate um, femininity to our ability to give care and love, unconditional love, just like the love of a mother. How about you, Josh? What is your word to ponder? I, I think my word to ponder is kind of a trite or like a cliche already, but I think I would still bank on love. Yeah. Right? I mean, let's just love each other for no reason at all. And I think this will be a better place. Yeah. Love so wins. this has been a wonder. Mom, again, thank you so much. Assistant Professor Phoebe Tan, Dr. Enrique Ike Orasion. Thank you, ma'am and sir. And continue to support us in the forthcoming episode. This has been a wonderful episode, really, ladies and gentlemen. To God in the world. Hey there, Sulaimanians! Daghang salamat for joining our episode tonight. Don't forget to follow our social media account. On Facebook, it's called Hashtag Suleiman. And we also have an account on YouTube called Hashtag Suleiman. Don't forget to click the notification bell to get updated on our new posts. Catch us also at Field Products every Monday at 8 p.m. And replays will be shown every Friday still at 8 p.m. and Saturdays at 2 p.m. So everyone, this has been Ronald in Faith by Lotus. And Joshua Soldivillo. See you next week only here on Hashtag, Hashtag Cinnamon. Bye guys!